Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to start a series on first person shooters. And we're going to be adding different things like how to set up a gun. We'll set up leaderboards that keep track of kills and deaths. And then we'll also do a few more things. So, one of the things we're going to take a look at is how to create a gun. So, this gun right here can shoot bullets. And then, if the bullets hit another player, they'll do damage. So, let me go and find where my guy went to. He's trying to run for me. Okay, and if you're playing on a server with other players, then it'll actually keep track of how many times you kill a player and also how many times you die. So let me go ahead and load up a local server and we can take a look at that part of it. Okay, so now if you're in a server with some other players, and let's say I kill this player up top here. Then in the leaderboards, you can see that my player 2 got one kill, and then player 1 has one for the deaths category. Alright, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do some of this stuff in Roblox Studio. Alright, so in this series, we're going to start off by getting the gun to shoot bullets. To do that, we need a gun model. And for the gun model, you can either create your own if you want to do that. For this example, I just took this one from the toolbox and wrote my own scripts for it. So let me go ahead and show you where I got that from. So if you go under the View tab and open up the toolbox, and then search Gun up in the search bar. I use this one right here, the one that says Pistol. And then for the actual tool, I just cleared it off and deleted all the extra stuff. So basically, I deleted everything except for the actual model. Alright, so that's the only part of it that I'm using. So I'm not actually using any pre-made scripts that came with it. So we're actually going to be writing our own scripts for this so that you can take that script and move it to any model that you want to. The one thing that's important to keep in mind is when you're searching through the toolbox for a gun, they're not all created the same. So what you're really looking for is a tool where all the parts are grouped into one part, and then you want to make sure that part is called handle. If you find a tool that you like and all the parts are kind of separate, see if you can go under the model tab and select all the parts and use the union button to group them all together, and then rename that union to handle. So the script that we're going to be doing should work for most items as long as it looks something similar to this, where all the parts are composed into something called handle. All right, so while we have the toolbox open, let's go ahead and get a sound for our gun as well. So if you click on the drop down menu, you wanna select audio. And then in the search bar, you can search something like gunshot. And then you can take a look through some of these to see what they sound like. And once you find one that you like, you're going to click it. That'll insert it into the workspace, and then from the workspace, you just want to drag it inside the handle of the handgun. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is start working on a local script for this tool. So go ahead and find your gun over in the Explorer menu and click on the plus sign. And then we're going to be adding a local script. For this local script, we're going to start by making a reference for the gun. So we'll say local gun, and this is going to be equal to script.parent. After that, we're going to make a reference for the sound. So we'll say local, and then we'll say gun underscore shot, and this is going to be equal to gun dot handle, and then inside the handle is where we stored the sound, so it's right here. So since there's a space in between gun and the word shot, we're going to use square brackets, and then we'll put the name of it inside parentheses, so we'll say gun space and then shot. Next, we're going to create a function that will run whenever the user clicks. So we're going to start by saying gun.equipped. So this is when the player equips the gun. We're going to say colon connect. Inside the parentheses, we're going to define a function. Inside this function, we're going to pass the mouse object. And then inside this function, we're going to define another function. We're going to say mouse.button1down. And then we'll be connecting this. Inside the parentheses will be another function. This time we're not going to pass any parameters. But what we're going to do first inside this function is just play the sound. And we can do that by saying gun underscore shot. And then colon play. 
So this will be a good test to see if whenever I click the mouse, if I can hear that gunshot. All right, so let's go ahead and run the code and check it out. Okay, so now whenever I equip the gun and click the mouse, we hear a gunshot. Okay, so next on the to-do list is to get a bullet to shoot from the gun. We're going to be doing this in a couple different parts, but the basic idea is we're going to have a click event on the client side. We're going to send some information to the server side, such as where the click is happening, and also the gun's position. And then from there, we're going to create a part and use velocity to make it shoot. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to the local script, and we'll get started on that. So since we need to connect the client side to the server side, we're going to be using remote events. So let's go ahead and define those right here. So first, we're going to say local, replicated storage. And this is going to be equal to game, colon, get service. Inside the parentheses, it's going to be replicated storage. And then, so next, what we need to do is actually create that remote event. So under replicated storage, we're going to click on the plus sign. And you're going to add a remote event. And then go ahead and rename that remote event to shot event. After you do that, we're going to define a variable for that remote event. And we'll say local remote event. And this is going to be equal to replicated storage, which is where it's located. Inside replicated storage, we're going to say colon wait for child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put the name of the remote event, which is shot event. So next, inside this function, in addition to playing that sound, we also want to trigger that remote event so that we can write a script on the server side. To do that, we're going to say remote event, colon, fire server. Inside the parentheses, we can pass some information to the server. And what we're going to give to the server is the position of the gun, which is going to be gun dot handle dot position. We also want to send the location of the user's mouse, which we can do by saying mouse dot hit dot p. All right, so now that we have everything handled on the client side, let's go and work on the server side now. So we're going to be inserting a script into the server script service. So go ahead and click on the plus sign and then click on script. And then you want to rename the script to what I have right here, which is bullet create. Inside the script, we're going to start by referencing the replicated storage and also the remote event. Since those are going to be the same as what we just wrote, we can head back to the local script and copy these two lines right here. And then we're going to paste them inside of our script here. Next, we're going to write a function that's going to run whenever the remote event gets triggered, which will happen whenever a user clicks their mouse. So we're going to say remote event dot on server event. And then we're going to connect this with a function. Inside the function, we're going to pass the information we got from the client. So from the client side, we get the player automatically, which is the player that triggered the event. We also sent two additional pieces of information. So if we look at the local script, we sent the position of the gun. So I'm going to create a variable called gun and then POS for position. We also sent the mouse position. So to store that, I'm going to say MOS and then POS for position. Okay, just to test to make sure that this is working, let's go ahead and print off those two different variables. So we're going to print the gun's position. And then we're also going to print the mouse position. Okay, so before we run the game, let's go up to the View tab and select Output so that we can see the result. So now I'm going to run the game. So this error right here is part of the NPC, so don't worry about that part of it. So now whenever I shoot the gun, you'll see a couple sets of numbers right down here. The first one is the gun's position, and the second one is the mouse position. So by doing this, we know that our remote event is working, and we have those two pieces of information. So the next thing we can do is start working on creating the bullet. All right, so let's start working on creating the bullet whenever the user clicks the mouse. So we want this to happen on the server side, so we're going to be writing this script under the bullet create script that we put under server script service. So for now, we can go and delete these print messages since we know it's working. So what we're going to be doing is creating a new part and then changing some of its properties to make it look like a bullet. 
For now though, let's just keep it simple and just create a normal part. We can do that by saying local bullet, and this is gonna be equal to instance dot new. Inside the parentheses, we're gonna be creating a part. Then we're gonna say bullet dot name, and this is gonna be equal to bullet. After that, we'll say bullet dot parent, and this is going to be equal to game dot workspace. And then we're going to set the position of the bullet by saying bullet dot position. And for now, we're going to set this equal to the gun's position by saying equal to, and then gun POS. We're going to be changing this as we go along. For now, though, we're just going to test to see that whenever the user clicks the mouse, it's going to create a part. We don't really care what the part looks like at this point. We just want to see that something is created. All right, so let's go and run the game and check it out. Okay, so now whenever the user clicks the mouse, you can see a part appears. Obviously, this is much too large for a bullet, but it's a good start to see that we created an object. So now that we have an object being created whenever the user clicks the mouse, the next thing we're going to work on is getting this object to move, just like a bullet would. We're going to leave it big for now, just so it's easy to see that motion. And once we have the motion down, then we'll go back and refine the bullet. So we're going to head back under the bullet create script. And what we're going to do to make this object move is start with a distance variable, which is going to be the distance between the mouse and the gun. We're going to define that by saying local distance is going to be equal to parentheses mouse position. We're going to say minus gun position. So you can think of this, the mouse is far away. So we're taking the mouse's position and subtracting the gun position. And what that's going to do, it's going to give us a distance between those two points. Outside the parentheses, we're going to say dot magnitude. So all together, that's going to give us the distance between the mouse position and the gun. Then we're going to define a speed for our bullet. So we'll say local speed is equal to, for the value here, I'm going to do 500. You can adjust this if you want to, to make the bullet faster or slower. After that, we're going to say bullet dot C frame. So this will be the position of the bullet in the game. And this is going to be equal to C frame dot new. Inside the parentheses, it's going to start at the gun's position and go to the mouse position. And then here, we're going to be adding the velocity for the bullet by saying bullet dot velocity. And this is going to be equal to bullet dot C frame. And then we're going to say dot look vector. And then we're going to multiply this by the speed. All right, so let's go and run the code now and see what we have. Okay, so now when I click the mouse, we have a part that shoots off. All right, so everything looks good so far. Before we move on to making the bullet look more like a bullet, let's go and adjust the speed variable so you can see what effect that has. So back on the script here, let's make it something small, like maybe 50. And now if I shoot my gun, let's take a look at the bullet. So you can see if I lower the speed, it shoots much slower and also doesn't shoot as far. And let's go back to the script now and we'll try something larger than 500. So before it was 500, so let's double that and see what 1000 looks like. All right, so I'm going to shoot my gun with the speed set to 1,000. So it's similar to the 500, but it's just going a little bit faster. So you can adjust that number to whatever you like. I think 500 looks pretty good, so that's what I'm going to keep it at. All right, so so far we have created the bullet object and used velocity to make it move. So the last thing we're going to do before we end with this video is make it look more like a bullet. So to do that, basically all we're going to be doing is changing the properties of it. So up here where we define the bullet object, let's go ahead and add a couple more things. So first off, I don't need this line of code anymore since we're using the velocity down here to move the object. So the first thing I want to do is change this from a block part into a cylinder. And we can do that by saying bullet dot shape. And this is going to be equal to enum dot part type. And then from the part type, we're going to select cylinder. Next, we need to make our bullet quite a bit smaller than it already is, and we can do that by saying bullet dot size, and this is going to be equal to a vector 3 dot new. So what you're going to put inside these parentheses will be the dimensions or the size of the object, 
The first part will be the x, the second part will be the y dimension, and the third part will be the z. So after experimenting, some numbers that I think look pretty good as a starting point are 0 0.5 for the x, 0 0.25 for the y, and 0 0.5 for the z. Finally, let's go ahead and change the color of it, and we can do that by saying bullet dot brick color is going to be equal to brick color dot new. Inside the parentheses, you can choose the color. For now, though, I'm just going to choose gold. All right, so let's go ahead and run our script now and see how our bullet looks. So now if I shoot my gun, it looks a little bit more like a bullet. It looks like it's sideways, though, so let's see if we can fix that real quick. So to help us out a little bit to see which way we need to rotate the object, I'm just going to insert a cylinder into the game real quick. And then if we use the rotate option. And then for the properties of this part, what I'm going to be looking at is the orientation. So let's go ahead and use the green ball to rotate it to the way we want. Okay, and we see for the orientation, I need to change the Y part to negative 90. And on the script here, the way we're going to change that is by saying bullet dot orientation. And this is going to be equal to vector 3 dot new. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put 0 for the X part, negative 90 for the Y, and then 0 for the Z. All right, so let's go ahead and run the code and check it out. Okay, and now if I shoot the gun, the bullets are facing forward. So feel free to play around with these numbers to customize the look of the bullet. All right, so I think this is a good stopping point for this video. So in this video, what we did is we took a gun model, which you can either create or take from the toolbox. And then we added a local script to that gun so that whenever the user clicks the mouse, it's going to play a sound and then send a few pieces of information to the server. And then on the server side, we actually created that bullet object. We changed some of its properties to make it look a little bit more like a bullet. And then we changed the bullet's velocity to make it move. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one.